Ever since the show aired on television back in 2012, Longmire has been an absolute hit. Both for those who only watch the TV adaptation and for those who read the Western mystery novels written by Greg Johnson. Throughout the show, we saw a wide cast of characters, some that we love and some that we hate. In today's video, we're going to be ranking characters from the Longmire TV show. Let's get right into it. At the very bottom of the list, we find the scummiest of the scumbags, Eddie Harp. Harp is so villainous that he's even given an evil nickname from the Irish mob boss for which he works for. His nickname is The Dragon, which is fitting seeing that he is a fire-breathing big bad of season 5. What makes Harp the most hated character in the show is that there's not a single good thing about him. Not a one. Not one good quality. I mean, Harp's the kind of guy to use a shopping cart at a grocery store, load his groceries into his car, then leave his empty cart in the parking space. I'm telling you about it. If there's something more evil, I'm not sure what it is. But on the show, Harp is the epitome of pure evil. His intentions and his actions all spew, well, again, evil. Even when you think he has one nice quality, that proves to be a lie when the entire picture is revealed. I'm, of course, referring to the part of the show where Sheriff Longmire finds out that Harp sends checks to his parents every month. While that might sound like a good and noble gesture, we find out that the checks are linked to a bank account that Harp purposely drains, which means that if his parents ever do really need the money and decide to cash the checks, they'll be left with zip, not Zill, nothing. Harp is the truest form of evil in the show and is exactly why he kicks off this ranking at the very bottom of the list. Next up, Chance Gilbert. Imagine only being in six episodes of a TV show and still, still being the second most hated character on the entire thing. Pretty impressive, right? Well, Chance Gilbert found a way to do it and now finds his way onto this ranking because of it. As previously mentioned, Gilbert is only in six episodes of the show, but he does some truly terrible acts in his short time on on screen. For one, he kidnaps Vic and her husband when their car breaks down in an attempt to gain leverage for his anti-government movement. And secondly, he runs an anti-government movement. I'm no expert on evil, but if you're willing to start and run a movement that fully supports the absence of leadership, you may be on the path to lunacy. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you, my friend. But regardless, Chance Gilbert makes this list as the second most hated character in this show due to his complete insanity combined with his incredibly high IQ, which makes him a dangerous threat. Furthermore, he tortured Vic and her husband, and that is a, well, it's a no-no in my book. If you're going to be a lunatic, at least take a page out of the Joker's book and throw some jokes in there while you're at it. Like a, like a couple of chuckles, at least. And maybe you won't be the second most hated character of a TV series. Now we have Jacob Nighthorse. Mr. Nighthorse is the one character that lands right on the sweet spot where sometimes, you know, you hate him, but other times you really respect him. He often acts as the protagonist towards Walt Longmire and Henry Standing Bear, but truly, Nighthorse only wants what's right for his tribe. Nighthorse is quick to act against any notion that he believes will endanger or harm his tribe, but is quick to partner with those who seek to aid Nighthorse in his journey to aid, again, his tribe. Where Nighthorse really falters is that he never really asks the people of Cheyenne what they think. Nighthorse only does what he thinks is best, which is sometimes, you know, disagreeable. And instead of trying to see their point of view, well, he bullies his opponent into either doing what Nighthorse wants or getting out of his way altogether. Yeah, stay out of Nighthorse's way. Urgh. Jacob Nighthorse differs from the other two people on the list because he's not inherently evil. While he's a thorn in the sides of Standing Bear and Longmire, he truly does have good intentions most of the time and just wants to do what he thinks will better his people, which in itself is a very noble act. Furthermore, Nighthorse has supported Walt Longmire in many ways throughout the show. Granted, it's whenever his and Walt's interests align, but he does stand by him nonetheless. Like when Walt's daughter, Katie, wanted to become a lawyer for the tribe, Nighthorse was quick to advocate for her as as he saw that as a way to better his people and one can really respect that, truthfully. Up next, Henry Standing Bear. Pretty much the exact opposite of the character we just talked about, Henry Standing Bear is the more righteous version of Jacob Nighthorse as Henry is more concerned about battering the lives of everyone in the Cheyenne tribe rather than just acquiring more money like Nighthorse. Henry, or Hank as some people call him, is a friend of Walt Longmire and helps him and his officers whenever necessary. Hank has become a fan favorite on the show and it's easy to see why. Hank loyal, supportive, and caring, and many fans of the show can use him as an example of how to be a good friend. Walt and Hank become best friends back in the sixth grade after getting in a fight at the water fountain, according to the show, but besides that, not much else is known about Henry's past. Henry's the owner of the Red Pony Bar in this show, and by the end of the series, he's the owner of the casino, which only adds to the idea that he wants to do everything he can to help his people and their community. Furthermore, Henry never uses contractions in this show, and it's kind of a 
cool character trait, let's be honest. It kind of makes him the, the Yoda of Longmire. Next, Branch Connolly. With a name like Branch, you would figure that this wouldn't be such a likable character, but man, does he find a way into the hearts of Longmire fans. I mean, for one thing, he has all the female viewers hooked as he's not hard to look at, <laughs> saying so myself, and is often seen without a shirt. And as much as I want to say that he's a poser, I have to admit, if I look like that, I would forget to do laundry too. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. I don't think anybody else would. Along with his good looks, Conley is also very ambitious and is very much wanting to help out as many people as he can. His issue? Well, he, well, he has a few of them. For starters, he's rich, spoiled, um, kind of a brat, and his entitlement sometimes shows a little too much for people's, uh, well, liking. He can often come off as thinking he's better than other people, which is not something that people usually like about others. Furthermore, he's not the best swallower of law, which is usually a flaw. But when you consider the fact that Branch Connolly is a deputy, lawlessness only makes him less, well, again, likable. To be fair, Connolly usually ignores the law when he's trying to do good by his friends or be a good police officer, so in his eyes, petty laws be damned, right? Well, for some people, that's the most likable thing about him, in fact. But for others, they see the error of his ways, regardless of how good his intentions are. Branch still has a metric tons of things to learn while being a deputy, but he does plan one day on taking over as a sheriff of Absaroka County, and his ambition wanting to complete that goal is infectious. However, his ambition wasn't enough to keep him alive as his body was unfortunately found by the river in season four. Sad face. Now we have Victoria Moretti. The city girl who now resides in one of the most remote counties in the country is one of the best characters in the entire show. And for anyone who has even seen a second of the show, you know why. Big city roots are very easy to spot as she traverses her way through her new country lifestyle, which makes her one of the most relatable characters on the show, especially if, if you're from an urban setting yourself. The majority of the people watching don't live in a palace like Abaroka, so seeing Vic struggle to adapt to her new life makes a good portion of the viewers see themselves in her. Furthermore, Vic is one of the most badass characters on the show, taking action wherever she needs to and not being afraid of any challenge. Vic often throws herself headfirst into dangerous situations, but often comes out on top, making her one of the show's more attention-grabbing characters. Next on the list, Sheriff Walt Longmire. As if it wasn't going to be anyone else, right? I mean, it's his show. Walt Longmire, we're talking about Longmire, and, well, he's the calm, cool, and collected badass that we all wish we could be. For a person that's often in dangerous or tough situations, Walt's confidence and swagger never wavers, making him a very respectable and interesting character. Initially, he's a broken man who has placed his family and job on the back burner due to the trauma sustained from his wife's death, but her death only fuels Walt to be a better sheriff for the county and a good mentor for his daughter and his deputies. On top of everything else, the show takes place mostly through the perspective of Walt Longmire, which means that we often get to learn way more about Walt than any other character on the show. That's all we have for you guys today on the channel. Thank you so much for watching. 